Welcome to the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. We are proclaiming liberty one show at a time. And the next one starts right now. Clint Armitage back again. How's it going, everybody? So this is the Liberty Podcast. And again, I am your host. So we've been going through a series in Matthew and we're going through Matthew 1 all the way through Matthew 7 in this series. And we so we got through Matthew 1, Matthew 2, and now we're on Matthew 3. And Matthew 3 is basically about John the Baptist. So let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about John. Let's see what's up with him. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Okay, so first off, I mean, we know who John the Baptist is, right? It's it's Jesus's cousin who's similar in age to Jesus, and he's also part of Jesus's mission. And and it says it right there, the, the prophecy from Isaiah a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the uh, for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. That's talking about John, because that is what John is doing. John is basically preparing the way for Jesus's ministry and for Jesus to come on the scene. So he comes out there and he starts preaching, and he's preparing the way for Jesus. So he's going out there and saying, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven of heaven is near." And it seems like strong words, right? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. It does seem strong, and it is strong words. First of all, repent means to basically make a U-turn, kind of a 180-degree turn. Oh, and um, one thing I I didn't mention before I started talking about this is that some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about here in in chapter 3 of John, actually, I got a little bit of it from, I got some of it from a pastor by the name of Benji. So I want to give a shout out to Pastor Benji. Thanks for um, giving a little bit of insight on this, on a sermon that I heard him talk about. And um, so you'll hear some of that, as well as my giving my take on, on some of this stuff here in chapter three. Okay, so there's the shout out. Now, going back to John. So first off, John is a pretty strong character. You can kind of get that, you know, right off the bat here. What, because he's using those words, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then he, his calling is to prepare a way for Jesus' Jesus's ministry, for Jesus to come on the scene. That's what John is preparing for and preparing the people's hearts for. But you're going to start to see that John's not only a strong personality and he's a vocal guy. You're also going to see he's a little bit odd, a little bit strange. But, and he's also a guy that doesn't care. Do you know someone like that, that really doesn't care what people think? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes we, we think like, yeah, I don't care what people think, but a lot of us actually do. Like there's some times in my life where I'll say, I don't care what people think about me. And sometimes that's actually true. Like, I don't care what people think about me, but there's other times that I say that, but then I still do care a little bit because. I am going to, you know, I am going to wear decent clothes. Um, I am going to present myself as a professional when I'm doing something that I believe is important, right? And not really saying that I don't care, okay? Because, you know, a lot of the times we do care what people think. And, you know, sometimes I guess it's okay to do that. But then there's other times where if God is calling you to do something or to say something or to be a certain person or somebody that you need to be for God and not let others, you know, say things about you and let it penetrate to the point where you feel like you have to appease them. Then that's where I think you're going to run, you know, people will run into problems, right? When we start appeasing people versus God. Now, if, if that's not the case and, you know, you, you just want to present well, say like, you know, like when I teach a class, right? When I teach a class, I want to present well. I, um, you know, I comb my hair, take a shower, uh, put on decent clothes. And so there's a reason for that. 
but there's times where maybe God is asking you to do things a certain way and people are not going to understand. They may gossip about you just because the, the, the way you do things, you know, if God is telling you to do it a certain way or to be a certain way or to speak a certain way or to act a certain way. And if God's telling you to do it, there may be some people that, you know, um, don't like it. And so it's at that time, those times where you really shouldn't care what people think. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm relating that because John, and we'll get to see here a little bit more of him and his personality in the verses here. So let's go on to verse four. Okay. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Okay, so right off the bat, just in that verse, you can see, okay, he's a little bit odd. He's eclectic or whatever. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. So you're kind of thinking, man, it kind of reminds you of Fred Flintstone, right? But that's that he has a look like uh, the prophets of old. Uh, sometimes God asks the prophets to dress a certain way and do some certain things, and people are like, what are you doing? And they were depicting, God was using them to depict what he was going to do in the future and how things were going to happen. So it, it was like prophecy, but through the way they were dressed or what w- what they were doing at the time. I think uh, Ezekiel did a lot of that, the prophet Ezekiel. So here we see that John is uh, pretty odd here, at least. I mean, he's eating, his food was locusts and wild honey. So bugs and wild honey. Okay, yeah, that's odd. But look at here. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So, no matter if he was odd, people understood or knew that he was of God, right? He was preparing the way for Jesus, and people knew that. So, even though he was odd, he dressed funny, he ate weird things, you know, he was a strong personality, there was still something about him that drew people to him. Okay. My thought is most of it's going to be his words and what he was saying because he was speaking the truth. He was speaking biblical prophecy and not only prophecy, but like he was speaking the Bible. He was preaching, right? And so people were listening to him and people were coming and he was baptizing them in the Jordan River. So, you know, even though you may be odd or you may be doing odd things or God's telling you to to do things a certain way, people will still be drawn if you're doing it God's way, because if you're anointed by God to speak out for him or to do things for him or to act a certain way for him, the people who hear his voice, God's voice through you, will still be drawn to you, okay? Because it's God calling them, because you're speaking for God, God is speaking through you and being able to touch people's lives, right? Okay, so let's go on to verse seven here. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Okay, so now, again, now you're going to see even more stronger personality. As a matter of fact, you're hearing John go after the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, these guys are the guys that are doing things. They say they're for God, but like, you know, like the Bible says, their lips are basically speaking as if they're close to God, but their hearts are far from me, is what the Bible says about these guys, how they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk, you know? And so, so John here shows his strong personality again. He's kind of, he, he basically tells them, you brood of vipers, right? And then he said, who, who warned you? 
because they're coming to see him, John, and what he's doing out there. Because the, the Pharisees recognized that John was a prophet, a prophet of God. The people believe that. And the Pharisees and they um, and the Sadducees even believe that. Even though they didn't like John because he was very strong-willed and s- stood against them, right? Confronted them uh, with their hypocrisy. They didn't like him, but they recognized he was a prophet of God. And so here again, we see how strong John is and how kind of discerning he is and straight to the point in your face kind of guy he is. I, so I kind of like that. I like guys like that, that, that um, kind of, they're just all truth, strong-willed, all truth. Now they can be abrasive and they can rub you the wrong way too. But in this case, John is all truth. So there's really, you know, nothing wrong with that. Now it may rub you the wrong way because he may, he may be, he may appear insensitive, but Hey, I'm all good with the truth. I'd rather have a guy that speaks truth and is abrasive than a guy who lies and who's, you know, talks all nice and sweet, right? Because that's, that's worse. So he basically tells him, he calls them names, right? And then he says, well, you can't get away from this stuff. And, and he also addresses the fact that they always go back to the Pharisees, especially, right? They rely on the fact that their relative or their, you know, ancestry dates back or goes back to Abraham, our father, because uh, Abraham is the father of the Jews, the father of all nations. And so Jews, you know, uh, kind of relate to that. Well, the Pharisees use it as some type of, you know, to make them appear like they're even more holy because they're connected to Abraham. That's their father. And so what John was doing was cutting him off before they even said that, because they said that all the time. He cut him off right away and he said, don't even say to yourselves, you can't say that Abraham is our father because he goes, because God could literally take these stones and create children for Abraham. So he was already kind of preempting what they were going to say. So John here again He's strong-willed and he's a strong person and he's pointing to Jesus, strongly pointing to Jesus. He's using his platform to do so, okay? So let's move on to chapter, I mean, um, verse 11. Here it goes. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay, here again, John is talking real strong, but it's all truthful. Hey, I'm baptizing you with water, but there's going to be someone stronger than me, more powerful than me, and he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, and then he starts talking about the winnowing fork, which is the 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 fork that kind of separates the the separate the chaff and the wheat. Okay, and get rid of the chaff, and it's going to go into the fire because that's how you get rid of the chaff. That's the stuff you don't really want when you're you know sifting wheat. You want the wheat in the wheat kernels, but you don't want the chaff. The chaff go gets is gets burned uh, because it's unneeded, unnecessary. So he is being talking strong words again. And basically tell him, hey, dude, Jesus is going to come and he's going to separate the people that are not for real and not down with God. Boom. You're going to go to the fire. And then he's going to take, he's going to separate and take the actual wheat, meaning the true believers, the saints. So he's going to separate that. And that's what Jesus is going to do. So you better watch out. That's what he's saying. All right. On to verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Okay, so that's the end of chapter 3. Now let's break down that last part from uh, verse 13 through the end of that chapter. So Jesus comes now, 
and he comes to the the Jordan to be baptized by John. So this is this is kind of what I like about John. He understands some things. One, one thing, he's a strong per- personality, right? He's strong. He's vocal, and yet he is still obedient, right? So you know that he has his heart in the right place. He's not just this prideful guy because he, he can come across that way because he's so strong. He talks so strong and so vocal, right? And he stands for um for what he believes. So you can sometimes you think people that do that are actually prideful, but uh, not in this case, because John knew his place. He knew that he wasn't the guy. He knew he was the guy, second guy, right? Under the guy, which was Jesus. And so he says, he basically telling Jesus, no, man, I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, baptize you. You need, I need to be baptized by you, not me, you being baptized by me. So that's what he's saying there in verse 14. But then Jesus says, let it be so for now, because it's proper, okay, to fulfill all righteousness. Well, what Jesus is saying here is, hey, it's cool. Do it for now because it has to be done this way, right? Because Jesus has to be baptized too, because he's, he's a man, mortal. Well, he's the God man. But what I'm saying is he is supposed to be experiencing everything we experience on this earth and do the things that the Father has called everybody to do. So because Jesus is leading by example, and so he's getting baptized too. Well, someone has to baptize Jesus, right? Someone has to baptize him. So John is the one, even though John, you know, was like, no, I don't want to do that. Jesus is like, hey, let it be so for now, because God's plan is coming to fruition and it includes you baptizing me through, uh, by water. All right. So another thing is, is that John obeyed, just like I said earlier, he, he was obedient, but he obeyed when he, to- he didn't totally understand. And the reason why he didn't understand, because he knew who Jesus was. Now, other people, they didn't know who Jesus was yet. He hasn't really come on the scene yet and made his uh, ministry public. This is still before that. So John knew because obviously he's his cousin and he knew as he was growing up and, and, um, you know, the Lord let John know who Jesus was and he was, his job was to prepare the way for Jesus. So anyway, he obeyed without totally understanding why. And that sometimes, sometimes that's the toughest thing, right? That's hard for us to do is, is to obey without understanding. We always want to understand. You know, even in, in um, Genesis, where Abraham is told by God in Genesis 12, 12, 2, I believe, God tells Abraham, hey, take your stuff, take your family and go, and I'll tell you where to go when, when it's time, you know? And so Abraham goes, but he doesn't know where he's going just yet. He just leaves. He just goes because God called him to go. So he goes. And so even though Abraham didn't understand either where he was going, he followed through with what God was calling him to do. So John, uh, John here is doing the same thing. He's obeying, not realizing like why. He doesn't understand why because he knows who Jesus is. So he's like, why am I baptizing you? You should be baptizing me. So, but he follows through and he still, and he does it. Okay. He does what he's called to do. He does what God tells him to do and obeys, even though he doesn't understand. So sometimes we're just going to have to do that. Right. And now this is what happens when that, when he's baptized. And this is, this is why Jesus wanted it to happen, or it had to happen this way, because as he was baptized and he came up out of the water, at that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And so, you know, the symbol for the Holy Spirit is the dove. That's why you'll see that depicted in pictures and all that stuff. The symbol for the Holy Spirit is the dove, okay? And it comes basically from this verse right here. It's descending like a dove and lightning on him. Wow. Okay. And the voice from heaven. Now God's saying this, this is my son whom I love with him. I am well pleased, man. Up until that point, Jesus is perfect. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. He's following God. He's, he's, you know, he's starting to complete his mission. I mean, ever since he was little, but this is kind of the start of it, but he's already completing the things that he's supposed to complete. And that's the same thing with us, right? We want to hear those things. This is my son. This is my daughter whom I love, with, I, with whom I am well pleased. That's the words we want to hear, right? 
So Jesus was doing, and he was all about his father. Remember when he got lost, when they had they came for the uh, the festival, um, and when he was young, when he was twelve years old, and his parents lost him. <laughs> Mary, well, Mary and his stepfather Joseph lost him, and for like two days, and then he says, "Hey, I'm about my father's business. I'm in my father's house." And so from even from that young age, Jesus was following God and doing everything that God was asking him to do. And so that's why right here, God says, God the Father says, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Man, that would be awesome to be able to hear that for us, right? If we were to follow God and and get close to him and understand him and do the things that he wants us to do and listen to his voice, hear his voice, understand his voice. Be clear with his instructions to us and then say stuff and be able to say stuff like, I am about my father's business. That's the ultimate goal, right? To be able to say that all the time. I am about my father's business, knowing that we're doing the will of God at all times. That's what we want to do. And yeah, we're not going to be perfect, but man, if our heart could be set like that, if it could be set on doing God's will constantly, every chance we get, we're going to hear those words, right? This is my son who I, who I love and with whom I am well pleased. Anyways, this is, this is awesome. So that's Matthew chapter 3. It goes from learning about John to his calling to when Jesus starts to... I, his ministry is just starting here because he's getting baptized. And then you're going to see he's going to get called to, uh, you know, basically go against the devil here in the next chapter. But this is kind of the beginning of Jesus's ministry. It's not public yet, but it's the beginnings. Things are starting to happen. So it's going to get exciting here. All right. Okay. Thanks for uh, listening in. This is another Liberty Podcast and I'm your host, Clint Armitage. And I want to thank you for coming by. And I want to just, I want to praise God. I want to praise God that we have the ability to use a podcast and this episode to just talk about him and be excited about God and be about his business like Jesus was so that we can hear those faithful words with whom I am well pleased. Oh, I want to hear that one day. Okay. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. As always, stay safe, stay motivated, and keep seeking liberty. for another episode of the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. If you want to get in touch, email us at info at clintarmitage.com.